Hey, Jason. Hey, Mitch. First question, who are you and what do you do? I am Jason McHugh. I do a few things, uh, but the least boring of those is I'm an indie folk artist here in Seattle. And you have a brand new EP called Apocalypse. That's true. Yeah. Can you tell me how this EP came to be? Um, it was pretty much just driving home from Denver here to Seattle after I had to cut a bunch of tour dates because of, I don't know if you've heard, but there was a little pandemic going on. And, um, you know, everyone started canceling the tours. And I was like, yeah, I should do that too. And it was on that kind of two day drive where I thought it would be funny to write an EP about like, you know, everybody's mental state from the beginning of it to the end of it. And it was originally supposed to be a comedy, like it was supposed to be kind of a dark comedy uh, EP, which some of those, uh, I guess those beginnings are still present in the EP, but it got a little more serious as it went on. Um, but that's kind of how I got came up with the idea, just on that long drive. And it was kind of like a very lame Homer's Odyssey of a drive, because like I kept meeting these weird one-eyed characters. And um, I ended up shoveling a motel parking lot in rural Idaho and uh, passed out in somebody's kitchen because it got altitude sickness. And I, I just wanted to get home. And uh, all those kind of are brought up in themes of the EP. That's crazy, man. I know, that was a lot. That was more than you were asking for. No, huh? no, that's exactly <laughs> what I want. I, I want to ask more about it because oh, yeah. I, and me and a lot of other songwriters, it takes a while for us to kind of craft ideas and really figure out what kind of vision we want to uh, accomplish with our songs. But you seem to, you said you wrote and recorded this basically all in a couple of weeks in March. Like the idea came as you're driving and then you wrote and recorded five original songs that quickly is yeah well i I, kinda, I wrote the songs in the car you like just kind of in my head like like voice memos kind of in your phone and then yeah voice memos are like every time i would stop to like fill up gas or go to the bathroom like type it in my phone or break out the journal or something like that and just kind of figuring out oh that chord change will go there you know this is what melody will go here and uh it didn't uh, recorded obviously until after I got home I got back here and it was just kind of a couple weeks where it was a very stark change from you know, sleeping on strangers couches and playing in folks basements to all right I'm stuck inside forever <laughs> you know for for uh, an unknown period of time what else am I going to do besides you know work my job going to record music and that's kind of how the EP came together in a couple weeks. Uh, one specific song I wanted to ask about was uh, Panic. That's my favorite song. Uh, it's, it's different than the other folk-inspired tunes, but it sounds really, it's gritty, it's inspired, and it just seems like it was really fun to put together. Like, you're coughing and screaming into the mic. You collected <laughs> samples. I don't know if I've heard you really collect samples for your songs before. I'm curious, was there a specific inspiration for that song? It stands out to me. That was actually how, like, thinking about that song was how uh, the whole EP kind of came together when I was taking that drive. Because, um, you know, I was, it, it, like, maybe five or so hours in, I was just, like, you know, like, <laughs> coming, coming up with these funny lines in my head of, like, lock up grandma in the old folks home, you know, and, like, kind of these, like, really ridiculous comedic things to say in a song about panicking due to covid and um it works with the theme though i think because like it it captures these kind of insane thoughts people have mm -hmm. r r rushing to the store to buy a hand sanitizer or like what do we do with these vulnerable people right yeah, it, yeah even though for you it's funny it, it captures the tone of a lot of of panic yeah i mean i kind of i thought it would be funny to have that song be like the soundtrack of folks like trampling each other to grab hand sanitizer in a Walgreens or something like that. And uh, I don't know, it just, it's funny. Like the, the song's supposed to be a comedy, I guess. <laughs> uh, your last album, Wasteland, came out August 2019. Uh, that also has kind of a heavy dystopian, maybe kind of cynical vibe to it as well. Is Apocalypse in a way part of the same story? An inevitable sequel. Maybe? Now it is. I like that. <laughs> That's really cool. You have a th you have a through line you didn't know you were doing. Yeah, you're hired. <laughs> cool. Well, on, yeah, I feel like I maybe answered your own question there, but on yeah. that, uh, so like, cause 
yeah the last album came out last august were mm. you working on other songs but le leading up to the pandemic that you were excited for and then you're like oh i'm gonna switch focus and work on the apocalypse songs those old songs if there were any like are they still are are those things that are still kind of relevant in a post-covid world or are they or are they just kind of ditched oh yeah i think so um are you referring to songs off wasteland or songs that i'm writing now that, like like yeah. between but be songs between wasteland and apocalypse where was there a new theme you were starting to go down yeah totally yeah um what was that weird to like just kind of like i was excited about a new direction and now i'm gonna go kind of shift gears yeah, yeah shift gears again it's weird in the same way that like living your life post covid in general and then switching to i'm sorry pre covid in general and then switching to post covid it's the same it's the same thing it's like no matter what projects you were working on your job your relationships anything uh when mid-March happened everything just got turned on its head so I think it makes a lot of sense that the songs I would be writing would turn on on its head as well and um, I don't know I feel like we're songwriters we write songs and if there's one thing to write a song about right now it's the thing that everybody is experiencing and thinking about and um, yeah I don't know in a way it helps me too it helps me cope with just the insanity of what's going on in the world totally which you probably understand too like yeah i'm not, yeah it's know. it's you you've captured in, in these songs I, i've had a few things i wrote the first quarantine song was kind of a funny thing i wrote and recorded but i didn't put out just didn't feel right and i started mm -hmm. just earlier this week another song i i don't know it was weird i felt like it was some material that other people had been doing and i didn't know if i wanted to do a lesser version of that because i feel like i wasn't I was making them personal songs where it's a worldwide community thing and I didn't know how to kind of include the general consensus into that. I was talking about maybe my own loneliness or whatever, things that, yeah, could apply to almost any other songs. They weren't unique enough to be writing about COVID. It wasn't capturing the moment in mm -hmm. a way that I think your songs did. Well, hopefully I still can, but yeah, I don't know. Right, and I think with the personal songs too, that also works because... What, what we're all going through is so strange and that we're collectively going through it, but it's also a very personal thing that we all have to deal with. It's like the, the collective of everybody's staying inside, but the very personal of you're staying inside and it's just you, you know, it's like we're all alone in this together, which is a very like strange thing. <laughs> I like it too. It's kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you did just about everything on this EP, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, except for the mixing and mastering that was done by Lillian Blair at Vera Project Studio. Well, actually, this was this is in her house, I guess, because, you know, COVID. Right. Um, be all the instruments in the production. That was me. Cool. This may be a tough question, but I am curious of all the things you do. Can you rank in order the things you feel like you're best at or most proud of? Is it like songwriter first, then guitar, then singing, producing or like how do you kind of go down the list? What would you feel your best? Oh, uh, um, I think I'm probably the worst at lyrics and then maybe the best at, uh, oh, I don't know. it's hard. It's hard to say. And this is the thing I'm the best at. Cause, uh, no, you're not being cocky. It's just what it, whatever. You, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I feel pretty strong about like the chord progressions that I write and about the melodies and stuff like that. I have a lot of work to do on production. Um, Mostly because I don't really have, like I'm going off of YouTube videos when I'm uh, just toying around on the computer and all that. Uh, so before I send it to Lillian, it, you know, it sounds very much like I recorded it in a bedroom and a basement because I did. Um, so that's something that I definitely can be better at. But um, And the songwriting too, that's the thing, right? We're always trying to get better and trying to hone in the craft a little bit and hopefully that never ends. Like. I don't know, even like the greatest songwriter of all time probably still Who, Who's that in your that. opinion? The greatest songwriter of all time. The greatest songwriter of all time, Nickelback. Oh, absolutely. Geniuses. Who got this photograph? <laughs> you know, I saw Nickelback open up for Bon Jovi in uh two thousand five. I was a kid. Uh -huh. And it was the best concert I've ever seen in my entire life. Funny, my friend Ryan said Nickelback was his first concert. He snuck into it. He somehow. snuck into a Nickelback yeah, was, concert? I think they were opening for somebody. And he was, was like, it Jovi? 
It may have been in 2005. <laughs> it could have been. I'll have to ask him. But he said, yeah. Wh- whoever maybe was the headliner, Nickelback was open. He said, Nickelback were way better than I was expecting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I loved it when I saw them, but I was also, I was a kid. Yeah. And I, I remember I kept like closing my ears because Chad Kroger, the lead singer of Nickelback, kept cussing. Like he kept, oh. he kept saying stuff and it was at the, the, the baseball park of the Philadelphia Phillies. So it was just this huge thing, you know? And, um, he just kept saying like, oh, it was, can I curse on this? Yeah. Yeah. There was fucking raining outside and now we're happy that it's fucking sunny out. And I remember being like, oh no, <laughs> my <Mom>? hero. <laughs> Why is he saying those words? <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, so that's how I found out what the F word was. It was from uh, Chad Kroger. Was that your question? Or <laughs> no, but I think it's a good question. I, I first read it on the back of a school bus. We were going on a, a field trip somewhere, and on the back of the bus, it's, I think it just said, fuck you. Did it and blow I, your mind? Were you well, like- I, I read it out loud in confusion. I just said, fuck you. And then a teacher <laughs> heard it, and w- I think started to yell at me and then clearly realized I didn't even know what it meant. And then she's like, oh, you're not in trouble anymore but right. i knew i did something dirty and i was trying to figure out what it that was exactly was it all like uh what was the feeling mostly oh no or was it was did something kind of spark i was you were never like, a rebel in any way i was such a goody two shoes and i liked that feeling i think that was an early feeling of like i did something wrong and i liked it mm-hmm. like yeah and, what, and the, why, why the sense that? that i got away with something too because i knew if other kids said it who probably definitely knew what it meant and i i got away with it <laughs> right yeah, yeah that's kind of nice <laughs> yeah fuck is one of the good words like you can like uh you can use it very strategically yeah if you want to i mean like i think it's a it's very much an expletive when it needs to be and like if you overuse it then it loses its flavor I just used it in a in a blog post I did recently, and I I sent it to a professor of mine who I still keep in contact with. I had the classic like movie experience where you have the professor that changes your life, and I asked him for his writing like advice. I'm like, here's the context in which I'm using. I think it works. It makes the passage more powerful because it it's a raw emotion showing that I'm frustrated in this moment more mm-hmm. than if I just said fed up or whatever the word is. Um, and, I, and he's like, yeah, I totally agree that you, yeah, when using this way, you, yeah, you made it work. Yeah. So totally. I, I think it's a totally special word that can be used. It's a very special word. Yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite cuss? Oh, God. You know, you're the guest. I'll have to think about that. Do you, <laughs> okay. I'll turn it back on you. <laughs> Do I have a favorite cuss? Yeah. Oh. Um, Ooh, I thought of one while what, you're thinking. What's yours? what's yours? My new thing, I really like calling someone barnacle head. <laughs> Like they use it in like SpongeBob. SpongeBob. They use it in SpongeBob, but it al- if I call someone a barnacle head, it clearly it's a clearly I'm putting them down. But it's almost like they're not even worth the time and effort to uh-huh. to call them a fucking shithead or whatever it is. <laughs> it's uh just like oh that dude's a barnacle head. He's a waste. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that a lot. You're right. It's like they're not even worth using a real curse word over. Yeah, it's like they're oh, it's just a barnacle head. And everyone's like, <laughs> what is he? That's really good. I love, um, I guess I love, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Like there's a whole new, um, like, I guess slew of like internet cuss words that are coming out. Like the one that comes to mind is like Karen. Oh, sure. Like yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about that because like, I feel bad for like a, someone who is named Karen, who's They're like innocent really nice. People who are being hurt by it. But you know, maybe that's how you can tell a really good Karen is that like she, her name is Karen and she laughs at it anyway but I don't know I haven't thought about the whole Karen I've just seen it three or four times on like a social media post right or right yeah <laughs> cool well I like where this went um before we get too much further I'm curious uh what did you bring for show and tell yeah so I brought you mentioned your uh former professor yes that so I had a really great professor I studied environmental studies at Seattle U and uh Right before I graduated, he gave me um, this book called The Bird Song Bible. It's my head there for comparison. That is amazing. But it's fantastic. It's exactly what it sounds like. It is the Bible of bird songs. Um, What what more can I say about it? It's just the Bible of bird songs. Here, I'm going to put my mic down for a sec to show and tell. Is that right? Yeah. Cool. 
I can narrate as you're uh, opening the book here. So is the, are these like all just birds around the world? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So every page is illustrated and there are numbers showing that you can like hear the sample. There's this little speaker on the side. Right, yeah. So 195 here. If you want to do the, the mountain plover. Ready? Hold on, let's, let's get right up in here. Yeah, so 195. And, and what is that bird again? That would be the mountain plover. It's beautiful. Can Does we get another one? Let's absolutely. Flip to your favorite page number and we'll do another one. This feels like real show and tell because the book's so much larger than me. I went back to when I was a kid. The Philadelphia Vireo. PA boy with a PA bird. All right, can we get a little sample? Absolutely. So 436. I think it's done. The Philadelphia Vireo. Now I've got something to show you because you told me in advance that you're going to be bringing a birdsong bible. Oh yeah. I happen to have my own here that I want you to evaluate. So check what? this out. No way! Don't hold, hold that oh up to the God. camera. It's like the same thing. It's a slightly smaller book, but it's also just a big fat birdsong bible from the 90s. Oh my God! I am. I am so, uh, I am so happy. <laughs> this is amazing. So you have like, this is obviously by the same manufacturer, the same publisher, uh, and it's just, it's a smaller version of that one. Holy crap. All right, we're going again. We lost a little camera there, but we're back up and running again. Uh, I just presented Jason with uh, my own bird song Bible book. The bird songs Bible. <laughs> This is amazing. I can't believe you also have like pretty much the same exact. Well, thank you so much for uh, doing show and tell today, Jason. Last word is yours. Uh, do you have any shout outs or plugs you want to give? Yeah. Uh, shout out. Thank you, Mitch, for thank doing you, this. Jason. This is awesome. I'm so happy and honored to be. It's just good to see you, man. It's good to see you, too. I haven't seen you in so long. Wait, I was trivia you. the last time we got together? We did a trivia night. It can't be that long. Has it really been that long? Was that 2020? Was that January or February? Was that was that last year? If that was January, I will eat my hat. That it's hard to think about like a good thing happening in, in I 2020. Know, I know. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Oh <laughs> uh, no! So uh, another shout out, uh, mom, dad, and Adam. Hello. Uh, not not I love you. I love you. That's better. You're the best. I'm going to see you in about one week because I'm driving home stay to tuned. Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah, I'm driving, like, <laughs> stay tuned for that. And um, yeah, plug the Apocalypse EP. Uh, People can find that on Bandcamp, Spotify, all the usual sh shit. All of the good stuff. Wherever you get your music, you can find it there. Fantastic. Jason, thank you so much for doing this. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you too, Mitch. Thank you. Cool. Till next time.